morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to invite up our 2019 confirmand and also birthday boy, Roger Boss, to give our invocation. Dear Father, quiet our minds, open our hearts, and receive our messages to you. God, you can destroy a mountain and make a tsunami, yet you choose not to. Instead, you choose to take the time to listen to your people. So as we worship here in our holy church, listen to, listen to your people and bless us once more. Forgive us for our mistakes and sins we have per, uh, committed and help us to seek the answers we so desperately need. We ask these things in the name of your holy son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. And now at this time, I'd like to invite up the Quist family to light our Advent candle. The light is surely high. Its rays reaching out to illuminate injustice and oppression. We hope that we watch for new growth to be hopes from the earth. With anticipation, we wait for the branch of mercy to shed its lifelessness and sprout new fruit. We open our hearts to be transformed with the promise of possibility that is to come. As you light this candle, the candle of hope, we pray that it will brighten our path, that our steps inside the church will be aligned with our steps outside the world. We await the Son of God.
invite you to join your voices and hearts with mine in prayer. Holy source and gift of life. As we come together this day, open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, that we may come to know your ways and follow your paths. Help us grow in love for one another and for all creation. As we prepare for the coming of the one who calls us all to turn from our false gods to you, Holy One, the source of our salvation. And in this time of Advent anticipation, help us to find the light in the midst of darkness. We ask that you fill us with your spirit so that we may be for your world a source of love and compassion. Lord God, when the demands of the world become too much, help us spread our struggles to your great community. And now in the words taught to us by your son, Jesus Christ, we pray the words together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Everywhere we go. How do you think we would feel? Tired. Tired? 
annoyed, <laughs> comment, back of her. So would you be nice to other people? No. Probably not. It would probably be a little hard to be nice to people. So I was wondering if you guys could help me out a little bit. They need to make this pack a little lighter. So I have a couple things that I've just been carrying with me everywhere I go. This is my insecurity. <laughs> you want to take that? <laughs> my anxiety. Thank you so much. That's really, really awesome. <laughs> My guilt. <laughs> AJ, you want to take my guilt? <laughs> That's good. I got a lot more in here. I got my worries. Who wants to take my words? <laughs> Verses 14 through 16. The days are surely are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
In those days, and at the time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be sun, signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and of the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all its trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let us pray. God of tribulation and truth, light a spark of hope in the darkness of this season as we keep the vigil of these purple days. Keep us strong, keep us lean, keep us faithful, and prepare us to bear your new life into this needy world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. (laughs) Most of you know that our Western community has experienced several tragedies over the past few weeks. And as we have in the past, we support one another through prayer, communion, friendship, and fellowship. At this seemingly dark time for Weston, I'm praying that the love we know in Jesus Christ will guide us through it all. So perhaps there is no place better to be during these dark days than here, right here in fellowship with each other. Because we come to fellowship in tragic times and triumphant times, in times of sorrow and successful times, times when we are horrified and times when we can't contain our happiness. But this we know, that time moves on. And so we find ourselves, however ironically it may seem to some, at the beginning of the most joyous time of year on the Christian calendar, Advent. With the beginning of Advent, we know that the Christmas season is upon us. And while the delights of the secular side of the season are many, the fragrant scent of a Christmas tree, the herb-chopped potpourri, the sounds of children's excited voices, 
and the irresistible tastes of the bakery's choices. It is also Advent. And for me and for those of us who love the coming of the Christ child, while we enjoy the many manifestations of the season, Advent is the time of year that brings us the deepest meaning. And I hope you will share in that meaning with me today as we consider one of Advent's most wondrous aspects. Because this time of year, even for those who do not share our faith, can be a time for self-reflection, and self-reflection that can be rooted in the cycles of the earth itself. And the winter solstice that falls during our glorious Christmas season only lasts for a moment, as the earth's north pole tilts towards its furthest distance from the sun, and then, in the very next moment, the cycle reverses itself, and God's miracle of light, ever so slowly, begins to increase its time with us until June. To many, this miracle of God's creation is barely noticeable. But that's the thing about the deep winter, isn't it? We're in the dark for so long and so often that it's easy to miss what's going on around us. We so often focus not on the wide world and its confusing and, and chaotic machinations, but on the needs of our community, our church, our family and friends. And indeed, even on the needs of our own body and soul. In this part of the country, it's pretty obvious that nature itself seems to take a break from the outside world and look inward. Such is God's way of allowing all to rest and reflect. Because outside, the world, covered as it often is in snow and ice, even finds the birds, at least those that remain, becoming quieter. Ah, the quiet of a winter's night. Have you ever gone outside on a cold Connecticut winter night in December and simply listened? Mm -hmm. Listen to that glorious silence. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, I see a few head, head nodding. And I suspect others of you are recalling those moments of quiet reflection. If not this year, then in years past. So what I'd like to ask you to do right now is to imagine a scene with you as the main character. You step outside on a cold, crisp December night. Maybe your family or your friends are inside, or perhaps no one at all. In any case, you are alone outside amidst the darkness, without any light to your path. And you begin to notice those things that winter's solitude provides. And the stars are above your head. The crunchy crystal snow is below your feet. You are enveloped in silence. You may feel gratitude for your blessings, or you may feel anticipation or excitement for the future. You may feel anxious or nostalgia for the past. No matter which of these emotions you experience or what combination of them you feel, there is something available to you in the depth of this darkness and cold that you can have at any old time. Something to enhance your peace or ease your pain. Something to give meaning to your nostalgia or purpose to your pain, or reason for your excitement. And what is this something that can arise out of darkness, out of cold, out of aloneness, and is yours for the asking? It's not something you have to wait until Christmas morning to unwrap. It's not something with an expiration date. But here are some hints. It's something you can return. But when you do, you'll have even more of it. It's something you can, in the words of Elaine on the old Seinfeld series, says you can even re-gift. But unlike with Elaine, no one will be upset with you for re-gifting. OK, enough hints. Can you guess what it is? Uh, hope. 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 <laughs> what the first Sunday at Advent points us to is hope. Hope. But wait, let's back up. Let's talk about hope, about having hope in the midst of our troubled and sometimes terrifying world. Because for people of conscience, standing on a, under a literal or figurative cold and seemingly uncaring sky full of distant stars, is it appropriate to have hope or to feel this thing called hope? Is it selfish to feel anticipation and, and excitement about life when the world is filled with so much misery, so much anger, so much confusion. Well, we have a word of hope from the Gospel of Luke, 
on this first Sunday in Advent. Luke writes, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. Nations will be in anguish. People will faint from terror. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power. And when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is, is near. So to my question, should you feel hope? Do you deserve to feel hope? Well, I say under the frigid beauty that is a Connecticut winter night, the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, for hope is the engine that powers our optimism. Hope is in the DNA of those who have committed their lives to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul once wrote that believers in Christ are prisoners of hope. And this we know, that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and the hope of Christ's life. And the hope of his return is the gift that keeps on giving and giving and giving. That is why Luke writes, truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That is the reason for our Advent hope. Because at the darkest time of the year, we have the promise of Christ that his words in all their power will never pass away. And just as surely as the darkness passes in a moment and the light begins to return, this we know. Christ's words will never pass away. And while you might not know it by the 24-7 Christmas music that sings of Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman and Silver and Sleigh Bell, all of which are wonderful, let's just keep in mind that not everyone feels like having a holly jolly, much less Christmas. And those moments of nostalgia and remembrance of Christmas's past can be freighted with sadness, longing and regret, especially at this dark time of year. But who understands that? Who knew best about that aspect of life? Well, I tell you, Jesus knew. Jesus knew that life itself can weigh us down. Jesus knew that life can drive us towards escape, which, is, which can drive us even closer to hopelessness. And that is why Luke says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. So be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Northfield, in this imaginary story I just told, we have been standing in the cold for a while, so now, Let's say good night to this cold and beautiful night, and let me invite you inside where it's warm and dry and see what's in store for us. Let's see if we can find hope inside just as we found it outside. You know, each of us have different routines for when we first come home. Some of us change clothes, others take a bath or shower. I still remember how my dad would come home. One of the Wilson kids would be tasked with pulling his boots off after a long day as a track man working in the dark tunnels of the New York City subways. And then the Wilson family of 11 would all sit down for dinner, which we did almost every night back in the day. Speaking of back in the day, there was a time when a knock at the door in the evening wasn't cause for alarm or for words like, who visits before texting first? In our story, which we may think of as a dream, the person at the door doesn't text or call, email, honk the car horn, or send up a flare. No, they simply knock at the door. And when you open the door, there stands Jesus, asking, may I come in? Because I have something for you. And before you can answer, Jesus is already inside. You know how time moves in dreams, how it seems to fly? Before you can ask Jesus what he has for you, Jesus says, I have what you most need, what so many of us so need. And then before you can ask, what is it? You feel it. You feel what's been given you in your heart and in your mind and in your body and in your spirit because Jesus came to give us what we so need, hope, hope. And before you can thank him, Jesus is gone. At least he isn't standing in your kitchen or living room anymore. And then 
this part of our story, our dream is over just like that. Now, as comforting as it would be to have Jesus show up and hand you hope as a Christmas gift, that's not likely to happen anytime soon. But what is likely, what is absolutely available right now, here, today, or whenever you like or need, is, that to, is to have hope. All you have to do is ask. Apostle Peter tells us that the God who called us to the eternal glory in Christ says that after you have suffered a little while, God will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. My sisters and brothers, this first Sunday in Advent is about the hope we have in Jesus. So let us ask God for hope together so that we can find meaning where there is now sorrow and find light where there is now darkness and find comfort where there is now only grief. You know, more than 50 years ago, in his last speech before he was assassinated, Martin Luther King said, and I quote him, but I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars, end quote. Norfield and all those listening beyond this sanctuary, as we move forward from this first Sunday of Advent, during these short days and long nights, with the juxtaposition of light and dark, rejoicing and mourning, let's take the time to look up and see the stars that are so big and bright and know that we can always, always find hope in the babe born in a barn in Bethlehem. Jesus, Mary's precious baby, born in the cold, under a dark and starry sky, who came to bring us many things, but none more important to us, more important to our community than the gift of hope. And all we have to do is let Christ into the home within our hearts. And so I ask, can we do that? Well, I believe yeah. we can. I hope we can. I know we can. And if you believe that too, would you please shout, Amen. 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 Thank you. 
God, we offer you these gifts and tithes. We pray that these funds may abound in love for one another throughout the world. Strengthen our hearts in holiness as we faithfully give, so that our ways may be directed by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
We have received the body here now, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us commune together. Holy One, as we have received these gifts of bread and wine, you have fed us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for assuring us of our goodness and love, and that we are members of your body. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, in the tradition of the ancient church, I before we pass the peace to Christ, join me in celebrating the Ave Maria and then Ave. Thank you.